Uh, Cynthia Bonta, this is, that is uh, Rob Bonta's mother, she is here. She was also here during the strike time, so I'd like to invite her up to say a few words. Um, you know, it's true, I'm best known as the mother of Rob Bonta, <laughs> but I'm also me. Uh, I'm, um, I'm a Filipino immigrant that came to the United States when I was 28 years old uh, as um, ecumenical scholar to a theological school in Berkeley, the Pacific School of Religion. That was in 1965. And I have always been very grateful uh, to have been brought by divine power to the United States at such a time as the civil rights movement because that shaped me in the way that I am today. Uh, that's how history affects us as persons, as individuals, and even as communities. Um, it was at the time that I was at school, um, taking up Christian education uh, and theology, um, when I got introduced to the Philip Farm Worker Movement, uh, there was a very active social concerns committee in the school, and uh, they had involvements in different um, social issues, the anti-war movement, the um, civil rights movement, uh, even solidarity with um, uh, the movements that were trying to um, dethrone dictators in other countries. Uh, but I gravitated to the Filipino farm worker movement. And it would be, um, uh, I was so uh, lucky to be here in 1965 during the outbreak of the strike. Um, I, I actually came in July that year, and that happened in September and that's when school started. So we would only come during the weekends and during holidays and Christmas break uh, to join the strikers here in, in Filipino Hall, which was the hiring hall at that time. Um, I, I, I can say that I saw and heard Larry Itlion, but I was then, uh, modest Filipina who, who thought that Larry was so awesome, I couldn't possibly come up and talk to him. Uh, but I heard what he said, and um, it was his booming voice that I'll never forget, uh, always listening to uh, the farm workers and, and listening to them and, and, and giving commands and orders. Uh, it was I always look back to it, and I and I can say that um, you know it's little things like that that when you reflect back, you um, it's like the journey that Gail says she runs away from uh, finally catches up with her. Well, it's the same for me. I um, I can say that um, you know those those things finally. Um, gained more and more value to me as I proceeded with my life. Uh, and today, I would say that um, my, my big thing is for Filipinos to know who they are. You know, uh, everybody has to know who they are. But for us as immigrants in the United States, it's quite important to know who we are as immigrants and how we are connected to our motherland and how, um, how history has shaped that country, the Philippine-American relations and, and how this experience as, as American, as Filipinos in America has shaped us. So um, every part of our history uh, has its own impact on you and, and for the farm worker movement, the stories about Larry. Uh, it's 
um, it's amazing how we can understand that it's in our DNA to, to be fighting for justice, just like Larry was. And that, um, you know, he had to stay here in this country to fulfill that dream, to be able to change the lives of those workers who he thought were really mistreated and didn't get uh, equity just like everybody else in this country. So, you know, the one thing that I will always um, say was his big achievement was that there was no union in, among agricultural workers until he created or he, he developed, he organized the people that then formed the Union of the United Farm Workers of America. No, it was very difficult to, um, to unionize agricultural workers until his time. Can you imagine that? AFL-CIO couldn't do it until Larry came along. And, and it really was his um, very um, uh, deliberate and conscious effort to talk to, to farm workers one by one and, and really talk to them in real terms as to how their life is and how they have to assert themselves to change it. You know, like the book says, you'll never get anything that, that's good for you unless you fight for it. And, and that's one of the great things about this book. Uh, it's, it's not a literary fiction story, you know, or a, a historical novel, you know, where, where you create fiction or a, a fun story around some historical facts. It's actually the most interesting thing to me reading it is that as it tells the story, it really teaches the listener, the reader. And, and the fourth grader is, is the perfect audience. You know, you, you're gonna learn a lot about a strike, what, a, what scabs are, what, um, what, what it means to break a strike, uh, and, and all that. And, and, and I, I've never seen a book like that ever before. No, it's, it, this is a really precious book. Um, I really have to thank Gail and Dawn and Andres. Um, I know the sacrifices that have come uh, along with creating something and, and the hard work, you know, all the, all the scholarship research. Um, you know, it, it is a very empowering book. This is what we need uh, for us who are always developing who we are as an individual and as a community. We need empowering experiences and lives to show us the way. And I think that this is a book that can really do that. And the, the village behind it, that's supporting it, the community. I mean, even the institutions, you know, the school board in Delano, that's amazing. I, I am going to um, use you as a role model for other school districts. For my own school district in Alameda, I think they should buy books too, and, and the curriculum that goes with it. So uh, I, 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 I'm very, very, um, uh, very impacted by this day, and I know that there's another day tomorrow that's going to promise more things. Uh, it, it's so much to reflect on, uh, and we never stop growing. Even an 80-year-old woman doesn't stop growing. And I thank you for the opportunity and such an empowering experience. Thank you so much, Mrs. Bonja. Those words are very inspiring. We also have um, Rudy Salas would like to say a few words for in the assembly world, and it was AB123 that helps kind of kick off this whole entire question. All right, thank you guys. Uh, I'll just, I don't know what else I can say that hasn't been said, but I'll just tell you, like as a kid growing up here in Delano, 
And in Bakersfield, you grow up and you hear these stories. And you, I remember one day opening the front door and seeing a march go by. And you start, as a kid, you start asking, like, well, what's going on? And your friend's like, oh, they're demonstrating. Oh, well, what are they talking about? And they start telling you about the movement, and they tell you about workers. And then they tell you, well, just go join them. <laughs> right? And there we are, running along in the middle of Cecil Avenue, running down the street, you know, joining joining the cause. And it's really about uh, listening to the stories that we hear about how sometimes, and we saw it in the, in the video as well, where people try to divide us, and sometimes along ethnic lines. But we know that when we come together, there's a lot of strength and unity and power in that. And I think those are the stories that I always continue to enjoy seeing and hearing because we know we're always stronger together. And, and um, you know, let me just talk a little bit. Uh, Assembly Member Bonta talked about some of the things, the fights that we have up in the Capitol, right? When we did Assembly Bill 123, you know, to include the contributions of Filipino Americans and Filipinos uh, into our history, you know, that passed almost unanimously. There were still a couple of votes folks that, have, that didn't vote for it. And our current fight, where we're trying to get ethnic studies included into our, into our school curriculum, a fight that continues today because it was vetoed last year, right? And, and you heard earlier, we were like, wow, it's 2016, and we didn't even have a book about Larry Yippon, right? And what he did, or we are still having these battles today. And so as hard as that is to understand, you know, that means we need you guys to help join us in these battles and these fights and to share why it's so important. Why, when these kids that are reading here understand who Larry was and what his family did, uh, what happened here in our backyard, here in the, in the Central Valley, in Delano, places like Delano or Stockton, up and down the entire place or across the country, that those have an impact on the way we see ourselves, the way we see ourselves integrating into our community and the strength that we have coming together to show that we are a fabric of America, that we are stronger together. And uh, with your guys' help, I hope we could get that ethnic studies bill passed. And I just want to say thank you guys for being out here. And <laughs>